Good morning. Our lecture today is about the ONTIF input output model. Let's take an example in order to be able to understand the, the idea of input output model. Assume that x equals 0.4 x plus 0.2 y plus 12 and y these are the demand function for two different commodities say for example is stands for energy that's why x is agriculture And Y is energy. Show, so equation X shows the demand for the agriculture products, while Y shows the demand for energy. We can divide each equation into internal demand and external demand. Internal demand means intermediate goods that will be used in production of another commodity, while external demand is related to the final consumer. So this part is the external demand to final consumer. And this part is the internal demand or intermediate goods that will be used in the production of another commodity. <coughs> what is the meaning of each number, 0.4, 0.2, and so on? <coughs> 0.4 means input from agriculture that will be used to produce a one dollar from agriculture so it's agriculture product that will be used in the production of another agriculture product 0.2 0.2y input from energy uh, sorry input from um, here in the equation of x it's input from agriculture that will be used to produce a dollar from energy Equation number two. O point two is input from energy <coughs> that will be used to produce a dollar from agriculture. And O point one is input from energy. That will be used to produce a dollar from energy. <clears throat> Another example. Let's assume that labor 
which is x1 equals 0.5 x2 plus 0.5 x3 plus 10 thousands and transportation for example which is x2 and final food which is x3 so we can write this equation as vector x And a matrix related to intermediate products, which is M, for example, and vector X once again, plus the final demand, which is D. So we can write it as 0x1 in the first equation. There isn't any x1, so it is 0. 0.5x2 and 0.5x3. 0.4x1, 0.3x2, 0.05x3, 0.2x1. There is no x2, so it is 0. And 0.35x3. And the same with respect to the final demand, it's 10 thousands, 20 thousands, and 10 thousands. So we can write this equation as x equal mx plus d. If the required is to find the value of x, the optimum value of x that should be produced of each one of them, of each one of the three commodities. So we can write this equation as x minus mx equals d. We can take x as a common factor. So it is 1 minus m, but this is using matrix notation. So instead of 1, we are going to write it as i, which is the identity matrix, minus m. x equals d. Divide by 1 minus m. So x equal, there is a division in matrix, it's inverse. multiplied by d so if you would like to find the optimal value of x you have to get the inverse of i minus m multiplied by d now we would like to know how to calculate i minus m i minus m is calculated as The identity matrix, which is the matrix with the diagonal 1 and all other items 0, minus the matrix M, 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.05, 0 0.2, 0. 0.35 so if you are going to subtract <coughs> the identity each element in the identity matrix from the uh, matrix m you can find i minus m so it will be 1 negative 0 0.5 negative 0 0.5 negative 0 0.4 0 0.7 negative 0 0.05 <coughs> <clears throat> negative 0 0.2 0 0 0.65 so this is the identity matrix that will be used sorry this is x uh, i minus m that will be used in order to find 
the value of x. The first step in the inverse of i minus m matrix is to find the main, the main determinant. The determinant will be calculated as, as we said before, we are going to take a column or a row. <coughs> Say, for example, 1 is going to be multiplied by 0 0.7 minus uh, sorry, multiplied, uh, multiplied by 0 0.65 minus 0 .0, negative 0 0.05 multiplied by 0. So it will be one multiplied by zero point seven multiplied by zero point six sixty five <coughs> minus zero multiplied by zero point of negative zero point zero five minus negative 0 0.05 multiplied by sorry 0 0.5 multiplied by negative 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.65 minus negative 0 0.2 multiplied by 0 0.05 plus 0 0.5 multiplied neg plus negative 0 0.5 multiplied by negative 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 minus negative uh, minus 0 0.7 multiplied by negative 0 0.2 so the final value would be 0 0.25 The second step in order to find the inverse is the cofactor matrix. Cofactor will be calculated as 0 0.7 multiplied by 0 0.5 minus negative 0 0.5 multiplied by 0. This is the first element. With respect to the second element, it will be negative 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.65 minus negative 0 0.05 multiplied by 0 0.2 and so on. So it will be 0 0.455 negative 0 0.27, 0 0.14, negative 0 0.325, 0 0.55, negative 0 0.1, 0 0.375, negative 0 0.21, and 0 0.5. Then we are going to apply the sign rule, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive negative positive so it will be 0 0.455 0 0.27 0 0.14 0 0.321 0 0.55 0 0.1 0 0.375 0 0.25 0 0.5 Then we have to find the adjoint. It will be the row will be the column zero point five five four five five zero point two seven zero point fourteen. So this is the first uh, row will be the first column. Second one will be the second one, and so on. 0 0.325, 0 0.55, 0 0.1, 0 0.375, 0 0.25, and 0 0.5. Then you have to divide the adjoint by the determinant. It will be.
2.2 and 1 0 0.56 0 0.4 and finally 2 now we are going to multiply i minus m inverse multiplied by the vector x sorry the vector z in order to find the value of x after multiplication you can find the value of x as ninety five two hundred sixty four eight hundred and thirty three six hundred so this is the optimal quantity that should be produced of each one of the three commodities in order to meet the intermediate demand and the final demand as well this is the end of our lecture today thank you and see you next week